Hello everyone, I'm Michaela Kathleen and today I'm going to be doing the How Well Do I Know My Books challenge, which is a challenge that seems to have been popular about a year ago, but here I am doing it right here right now. And how this works is I have a random number generator over there that is going to lead me to random books on my shelves and then I have to answer a question about that book. And I believe that this was created by Jesse the Reader, so I will link his original video down below. But let's get that first random number. All right, so my first numbers are 13 and seven, so I have to pull a book from shelf number 13, the seventh book on the shelf. So let's count. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I've pulled The Last Letter from Your Lover by Jojo Moyes. And let's see what the question is. So the first question is pretty easy. It is without looking at the description, tell us what the book is about, which I could not look at the description even if I wanted to, because I got this book kind of randomly from either the trading wall at the library or maybe a free little library box. So, and it didn't have the, the jacket. So there is no description on this book anyways, but luckily I do remember what it's about. Uh, it follows two timelines, a timeline in, I believe, the 50s, in which a woman has been in a car crash and lost most of her memories, and she finds this letter from a person that she was cheating on her husband with, and she has to kind of try to unfold the mystery of that letter because she does not remember anything about that affair. And then there's more of a present day timeline in which a journalist has found one of these old letters and she herself is also trying to unravel the mystery from long ago of this woman and her lover. So moving on to number two, we need new numbers. So we pulled five and 22, let's find them. Alright, so that was The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Another easy question, without looking it up, tell us the genre of this book. This is a dystopian YA, one of my favorite dystopian YAs. These are all very easy so far, at number three. All right, the numbers I got from the random number generator are 3 and 24, which I did not, I've been counting this as shelf three in my head not taking into account that this is technically my boyfriend's shelf and I've not read any of the books on this shelf. But you know what? We're gonna go with it. We're gonna see if I know anything about these books that I've never read. But number 24 on this shelf is... All right, I got the second Witcher book, which I've not watched this show either, so I really don't know much about this other than what my boyfriend has said about it. I did watch part of the first episode. I kind of fell asleep. He wasn't super happy. And I just read the question. Luckily, I didn't look at the cover too much uh, because the question is what is on the cover without looking at it. Um, well, I know that The Witcher is on the cover and from the brief glance that I accidentally got before reading the question, he seemed to be looking downwards and I think he had a sword and there might have been like a creature behind him, a dragony type of a creature. I do like how these books look on the shelves. They're very bright red, but um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, that's, that's basically it. Oh, it has the little Netflix tag on it, which I know my boyfriend doesn't appreciate. Interesting question, because I kind of messed it up all the way through. <laughs> Moving on to number four. Maybe I'll read the question before grabbing the book so that I know what's coming. <laughs> so the question is going to be, without looking it up, what is the main character's name? but let's get our numbers. So shelf number five again, and this time book number eight. So we got the third book in the Thousandth Floor series, um, which, so the question was, without looking it up, what is the main character's name? This book technically has a lot of main characters, a lot of viewpoint perspectives, but I would argue the main, main character is Avery, the rich, genetically improved girl who lives at the very top of the tower. And just double checking that I'm right. Yes, Avery. So shelf number eight, book number 10. Oh, <laughs> that is my Harry Potter shelf. So 
So I'm just going to say that Harry Potter is the book we're going with here. <laughs> and the question is, without looking, name a side character. Obviously there are lots and lots of side characters to choose from here. Ron and Hermione feel like the most obvious. They're kind of the biggest side characters if you're considering Harry to be the only main character. That obviously could go on and on. One of my favorite like really really tiny characters who we don't even see, we just learn about her existence in the history books is Gwendolyn Weird who enjoys being burned at stake. All right, next we have shelf 11, book 16. All right, we have Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake. And the question is, guess how many pages the book has without looking? Oh, it's definitely like in the 300 range. I'm gonna get very specific. 364. It says it counts if I'm within 25. And there are 398. Damn, 34 off. I lose. <laughs> All right, shelf eight, book 27, which is the Harry Potter shelf again. And the question was, without looking up what star rating did you give the book, the entire series has five stars for me, so very easy one. Shelf number one, which is the John Green shelf, and book number five, five turtles all the way down. And the question is, without looking at where does this book take place, this one is in Indianapolis because that's where John lived at this point. Most of his books take place in places that he has lived. Ooh, big number, shelf 15, book number 28. Gonna need new numbers because this is a mostly nonfiction shelf and I have landed on a nonfiction book. So we're switching to shelf 12, book nine. Which is Warriors of the New Prophecy, Starlight. And the question is, name the parents. And this actually is kind of the next generation of warriors. So the parents in this series of the main characters were the main characters in the previous series. So very easy one to remember. Our main character, Brambleclaw, his father is, oh darn, I've just said it's easy to remember. Hold on, he's the villain from the first series. Oh no. Okay, well, Squirrel Flight, our other main character, her dad is Firestar and her mom is Sandstorm. Still trying to think of Brambleclaw's dad's name. What is it? <sighs> he's the villain. Claw's <laughs> dad is? Oh no, I'm gonna have to look it up. I really am. I want to just remember it. Lion? No, he was a good guy. Damn it. <laughs> I feel like Claw was in his name too. No, I'm really not gonna remember. I don't know if his name will even be in this second series because I will not have guessed this to be this hard to remember. <laughs> Giving out the original series here to look up this name. Tiger Claw! Uh, I knew there was a claw in there. And I knew it was a big cat. I was thinking Lionheart, Tiger Claw. I should have remembered that. I just noticed that the video has not been recording for the last five questions. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of recreate what happened for those five questions. So, oh, I'm sorry, four questions, slightly better. So, the question for Allegiant was what color is the hardcover underneath the um, dust jacket? There were a lot of hardcover questions, which surprisingly I landed on hardcover for a lot of those questions. I say that and there's only two sitting here, but that felt like a lot to me because it's risky. Not everyone does hardcovers. But yeah, so I correctly guessed that it was red. Um, I had forgotten about this pretty foil though. All right, this next one, the question had been for Peter, The Secret of Rundoon, what color is the type on the hardcover underneath the dust jacket? And I was unsure if it would like match the cover or if it would be silver to make it a little easier to read, a little brighter, or if it would be just like a basic black. And I ended up guessing silver and then got a big surprise in that they just, recreated the cover on the hardcover. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, uh, it's a gold color instead of silver. And then the next question for 
New Moon by Stephanie Meyer was are the chapters titled or just numbered and um, I went with the thought process of this was maybe a little bit lazy and just numbered but it is both numbered and titled <laughs> and then the last question that like didn't record um, was about the giver and it was is without looking is there a award on the cover which obviously I was pretty sure the giver has won awards <laughs> and but I wasn't sure if my edition had one on the cover or not and I took a wild guess and said that probably it did and it does is the John Newberry medal but going back to like live real-time answering the questions pretty sure we're recording now let's get our next numbers all right going back to that non-fiction shelf but I think it'll work for this question because the question is does the cover have any author blurbs on it non-fictions would potentially have that right we're gonna find out um book number eight not looking at the cover <laughs> all right um this is right which is a book about writing that I did not really enjoy. Um, I'm gonna say it probably doesn't have any author blurbs on it, but let's see. Oh god, it does. <laughs> Kurt Vonnegut, in fact. As well-researched and helpful a book on writing as I have ever read. Well, Kurt Vonnegut, I disagree. <laughs> All right, shelf 11, book 25, fantasy shelf. I can't look at the back cover now, so I'm gonna hold up the back cover. Um, it's the fork, the witch, and the worm, since you can't see the front cover. And the question is, does the back cover have a description on it? And I don't think it has, like, a synopsis. I think that it has a quote from the book, if I remember correctly. Or maybe a couple of quotes. Enter a magical world of Algasia and beyond. It was night when Aragorn returned to himself. Yes, this is a quote from the book. Woo! All right, shelf nine, book ten. Nine, a new shelf. The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith, and the question is, does this book have an author photo? And you know, <laughs> this book was actually written by J.K. Rowling, so I'm gonna, gosh, had it been revealed? It had been revealed by the time I bought it that she was the author, so was this like a later print that had her photo? I feel like no, because it's under the pseudonym Robert Galbraith, so I'm gonna go with no author photo? Yas. No author photo, just a very short description saying that this is actually J.K. Rowling. <laughs> oh, funny, the next question is, is the author using a pen name? So, shelf four, book twelve. New shelf! <laughs> no, the authors are not using a pen name, but there are three of them. Scott Westerfeld, Margot Lanigan, and Deborah Biancotti for the Zeros trilogy. Alright, shelf one, John Green again, book two. So we have An Abundance of Catherines, and the question is, is the book in first person or third person? And I want to say John always writes in first person, but at the same time, no, I don't think he did for this one, though. The Fault in Our Stars is definitely first person. Looking for Alaska definitely is. Paper Towns is first person. Third of the All the Way Down is definitely first person, but something I have the feeling that this one's not. It's not, because it talks about Colin. I think Colin doesn't really <laughs> see himself very well. He doesn't have a lot of um, self-awareness, and so I feel like this one's third person, and that's probably why. So that it could say things like, Colin didn't understand that he was the missing piece in the pizza. <laughs> Let's go to the first page. Yep, the morning after, noted child prodigy Colin Singleton. Colin had always preferred baths, blah, blah, blah. So yes, third person. I think this might be his only third person book. All right, shelf four, book six. Scott Westerfeld again. All right, imposters. Without looking, does this book have any pictures or graphics? I don't believe so. Nope. No, it does not. <laughs> All right, shelf two, book four. Another new shelf here. All right, Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Does this book have an epilogue? Yes, I'm pretty sure the epilogue is Kath writing her story for her creative writing class, which she has been strolling with throughout the entire book. Okay, it's, it's not labeled as an epilogue, it is just more of those little pages of Kath's writing, and it is, I think, an excerpt from her assignment, but 
is not set up as an epilogue. <laughs> this pile is getting tall. All right, shelf six, book 25. Kind of getting to the end here. Another new shelf. Why We Broke Up by David Handler. Does this book have a prologue? Um, this book has a lot of interesting stuff. I'm totally gonna be guessing in the wind here. I'm gonna say, yes, it has a prologue. No, it doesn't have a prologue. All right, shelf 10, book five. The final book in the Peter and the Starcatchers series. And the question is, is this book signed? Which like, I do not have very many signed books. Pretty weird if I forgot which ones are signed. This one is not. <laughs> don't, I don't have to look to confirm. All right, shelf 11, book three. Two Dark Rains by Kendar Blake. And the question for this one, is there a like design with the page numbers? Is it above or below or none at all? I'm gonna say none at all, totally guessing. Yes, none at all. All right, shelf 12, book seven. All right, and that is again, Warriors of the New Prophecy, sunset this time. And the question is, do the chapter headers have designs? And I'm gonna say no. I think this this is a book with just very plain numbers. <laughs> oh damn! I totally forgot. These books have great designs above their chapter headers. They always have little portraits of the cats. I totally forgot that. <laughs> Isn't that just a delight? This is getting dangerous. I'm trying to balance it out a little. It only has to last for like four more questions. All right, shelf eight, book twenty-one. Eight. <laughs> Harry Potter shelf. And the question is, do they have acknowledgments? I feel like most most books have acknowledgments. I'm gonna dig down to the Harry Potter book right now. Alright, let's see. I'm gonna say if one has acknowledgments, they all do. <laughs> no, they don't. Or at least this one doesn't. Ooh, shelf 16, final shelf, book seven. And the question is, what year was this book published? I actually just got this book from Once Upon a Book Club last year, so I know that it was published in 2020. Yep, March 2020. All right, final question, shelf six, book 26. A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. And the question is, what year did you read this book? I read this the year the movie came out. Um, so, but I don't know what year that was, so I would have to look it up. I will. 2016, I believe, is when I read this. <laughs> so yeah, that was the How Well Do I Know My Shelves challenge. It was a little messy. <laughs> I feel like I was kind of, kind of shaky on knowing my shelves in, in this way. <laughs> but hopefully you enjoyed watching and on to the quote for today's video, which today I have one from Elvis by Christopher Paolini. And it is said by Sephira, and it goes, Live in the present, remember the past, and fear not the future, for it doesn't exist and never shall. There is only now. Thanks for watching. Remember, words matter.